there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the brand new Paul Rubens Artist Soft Pastels. We're going to look at the good parts, the bad parts, and then you can figure out if it's something that you want to add to your collection. These have just launched on Amazon, and as far as I know, um, there's no reviews on them right now. I'm filming this on March 8th, and I just checked, I, I actually Googled for Paul Rubin Soft Pastel Reviews, couldn't find anything. I found the Amazon listing, and, um, and there were no reviews there yet. I had seen these on Instagram, and I just, I had left a comment, I'm like, oh, these look cool, because, um, they do. I'm like, I said I was looking forward to trying them out when they're available, and the company contacted me and asked me if I would like a set to review, which I accepted. So I did not buy these, and I just want to make that perfectly clear. They are selling for currently between $32 and $40. Um, I think it was like $39 something on Amazon, and then there was, if you were a Prime member, it said you paid $8 less. So um, for 40 pastels, uh, give or take around a dollar each at the most a dollar each currently, but as you know, prices fluctuate. So I'm gonna be reviewing these as if they cost $40 because I like to, you know, you, when I'm reviewing a product to take the price in consideration because I want to, you know, look at value for money. They come in a hard shell box. They have a, um, a foam protecting cover and they also have a little, um, like little slots for every pastel to, uh, to fall into. They are handmade, they say and um, there is inconsistencies between the size so it does make me believe that they are hand rolled rather than extruded like for instance if you look at this uh there's a gray one it's quite it's quite dinky compared to say this pink one which is quite chunky so um yeah there's some inconsistencies between the uh, the size of the of the pastels there's also inconsistencies between how hard and soft they are but i did find them generally to be very soft in fact they remind me a lot of um, the Sennelier soft pastels if you've ever used those. They do not come wrapped, which for me is a benefit. I would buy and wrap my pastels anyway. They're just a little more useful. Um, I did find, like I wanted a, a smaller size of the screen pastel just to do some squiggly kind of sketchy marks in the background here. So I broke that pastel easily. I tried to break another one and it wouldn't break. So there is definitely um, inconsistency between the density of the colors, which um, I do pastels, I, I used to do them a lot more, and it did seem to me that some colors were scratchier than others, even in the same brand, so I think that's probably a fairly, um, a fairly common thing, you kind of, your lighter colors being a little softer, almost like color pencils, and harder colors might be a little scratchier, there's less maybe clay in them or something, I don't know, even picking them up I can find a slight difference in weight, um, like this black feels super, feels, um, feels super light and the pink almost feels a little heavier. Um, this one feels kind of light. You know, I mean, it's it's a very small, very small differences. Currently have them in the slots they came in and you're just touching them, my hands are a mess. These are a very, very soft pastel. Um, so I can just lay these down so you can see how they'll come. Now what I'm gonna do is put these in my pastel drawers with my other pastels because the I would say the biggest con of this set, we'll talk about the pros and cons here, the biggest con would be the color selection, it's a very, I think it's a, a, a pretty strange color selection personally. And as far as I know, there's no open stock availability for us in America. You probably could get them open stock in China because this is a Chinese company. Um, and I believe they came on the market with all their products to serve the Chinese um, artist quality market because there was really very little available for uh, for people to get in China that was good quality. At least it's my understanding when I've read any of their literature. Now, speaking of the literature, we're going to come to another con, and that is the printing is so tiny in this brochure. I I even like I even showed it to my husband. I'm like, is it me or is the word is this print really small? Look at those those are paragraphs, and they're like. What is that? I'm gonna hold it to my, that's like two inches wide. That's two inches wide. Look at that tiny print. I zoomed in with my phone, but it really wasn't anything um, neat to know, but man, the print is tiny and that was frustrating. So here I thought there were color names. So I zoomed in and it has numbers, but they just say Paul Rubens underneath. It does seem to be in the order that they came in the box. So if you wanted the color number, maybe they're gonna offer open stock or maybe there's some way you can order colors, you'll be able to do that. Uh, but these feel so much like Sennelier or Schmincke. Maybe not as buttery as Schmincke. They definitely feel like Sennelier. Um, you could probably, you know, I would just, I would just replace with something easier to get if you need a single, 
a single stick rather than you know try to source these unless I don't know unless some art supplier in America decides to carry these but then they'd probably be more expensive because they'd be undercutting their brands I don't know I don't know what it takes to get a whole new um, a whole new like line into a store I imagine I imagine there's a lot uh, there's a lot that goes into it but anyways it comes with this brochure it comes with this color swatch which I did swatch out these are very um, they're very soft so they're very dusty they do sm uh, smear out and blend very easily and um, this is a color range here I'm gonna hold it this way because I mean there's no words to read it just says Paul Rubens under each one and there's a color number but we take a look at the color scheme the way that I, I wish they laid them out in the box in more of a logical way of course you can move them around and do them like I'm gonna put these on pastel drawers I'll show you those in a minute don't let me forget um, and I'll show you kind of how I keep them but like we've got one two three four five reds kind of coral is kind of reddish but like if I look at that red that red and that red they're so very similar why would you do that and have no purples because like at first I was like I'm gonna draw an iris and I thought about doing an iris before I really looked at the color palette because I'm like, oh, I, for some reason I like to draw irises in pastel. I don't know. I've done it before. I have a tutorial on my channel using a variety of different brands. Um, and there was no big purple, but I just sketched it because I thought, why not? Um, and one thing I realized as I was working with these is that these are so soft. They're kind of like your final layers. I don't think you'd want to do a painting start to finish with these. You can, but you're going to be it's going to be really easy to overwork it because you're going to have so much pigment down so quickly that it'll be, it's kind of like when you're oil painting and all of a sudden you've got way too much paint and everything's just smooshing together. That's kind of what you have here. How I prefer to work with pastels is to start off with a hard pastel, like a new pastel um, or Conte or something that's just harder and get my first layer in and then I layer up so that by the time I'm there doing my final like highlights and shadows, anything final, I could put in with a soft pastel like a Snellier or Schmincke or these I think would be great for those final those final layers because it will lay on top of those harder layers. Um, with these it's really easy to kind of fill the tooth and then not be able to put more down. Um, of course I was working with a, just a slightly textured paper um, so yeah or you or work with a really toothy paper or a sanded paper so you have or even a velour paper so that you've got a little bit more uh, layerability aspect. You just get a little bit more tooth that can grab that. But this is a color scheme. It's a kind of kind of unusual. Um, so yeah, there's the four very similar reds. There's like three different blacks. There's that kind of really, I would say, neutral black. That's maybe a little bit warmer. This one's maybe a little bit cooler. Um, and we've got a few grays. We've got like a purpley gray. We've got a green gray, I'd say. We've got this lavender gray. We've got this kind of uh, umber or taupe color. We've got another like lighter taupe. Um, we've got some like Naples yellow, yellow ochres, uh, raw siennas, um, like a navy blue, kind of ultramarine, kind of a thalo or a prussian, and then we get this kind of like a periwinkle. We've got a few neutral colors there. It's just a weird assortment. Um, I think that like you get rid of me, maybe one of these browns, replace it with something else, get rid of maybe two of these reds. Let me see, are the reds equal softness? Let's see, maybe they gave extra reds because one's harder and one's softer. So let's just, let's just see. Let's grab a, let me grab a piece of paper here. So this is, let's try these different reds. That feels kind of scratchy. This is a really hard, uh, textured paper too, by the way. That one feels kind of scratchy and hard. Yeah, that one's pretty, they're all, they're all kind of, they're all kind of hard for the cool reds. That's much softer. That's, that's softer. And then this is softer. It has got white in it too, which I think makes it a little bit softer. That feels much softer. Let me try that on a swatch card because make sure I'm, it just feels kind of scratchy. Not too, not, not scratchy, just, just harder than the, that feels a little bit softer. I guess you can see the difference in color there. But I mean, it's not like, I, I think I'd like a little bit more of a, especially if you're gonna come up with one set, like this one's very similar to the first one, but maybe a little bit softer in texture. I think if you're gonna come up with an introductory set and it's the only product you're gonna have available, then you would have a better assortment. But that said, I'm gonna put these with my regular pastels and I mean, just touching them. <laughs> Are a mess. So if that bothers you, I would recommend something like a pan pastel or even like a Conte, which got a little bit of a wax 
um, I got a wet rag here I'm just wiping my hands off with, um, maybe like a Conte crayon that's got a little bit of a wax binder to it that's not going to blend as much and be harder, but it's also not going to make you so messy. Uh, so I'll show you some of the sketches I did with them, and then I'll show you my pastel drawers because uh, I think that would be kind of interesting to see if you've never seen them before. So I did... Um, I did this one here just to just to kind of play with some layering, play with some blending. I was just doing some. I this looked better before I finished it. I wish I didn't blend it. I wish I just left, left the strokes alone. But uh, there's just a, you can see the vibrancy on a toned paper anyway, rather than uh, <laughs> rather than the artwork. It's more of just like just look at the opacity. Very opaque. Um, quite easy to work with to be honest but I wished I had more colors um, or I wish I started off with a harder pastel and then built up and that's when I use these in a project that's what you're gonna see I'll start with a harder pastel and build up but I want to keep the review to just these pastels now I'm gonna reach across my desk and grab my pastel grab a pastel drawer anyway so I can show you how I keep them so this is how I keep my pastels this is uh, really handy for me because I have them kind of arranged with their color friends with similar colors like these are green undertoned pastels these are kind of more of like a vibrant green these are yellow undertoned um, and then these are kind of like a mid and these are a light and so like I would just well there really, really isn't a lot of greens in here but I would just kind of put them in where they go um, I unwrap them because it's just easier to deal with them if they're unwrapped I'll break them if needed um, yeah, I mean, even little bits that have kind of crumbled, like this is probably uh, Schmincke or maybe even a Sennelier, because it's all because Sennelier's do tend to crumble, especially the full sticks. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a drag. I, I prefer the half sticks just because you don't have to unwrap them. Um, but yeah, I mean, they do seem to be as, uh, as nice as a Sennelier, but, you know, I don't know about light fastness. There's no light fastness information in the literature here that I can see. I'll look at the charts here if they're big enough to read, but I don't think it says anything about light vastness, so that would be a concern. It's really good, something you want to think about um, because if you don't know what the pigments are in the pastels, they could fade. Now, generally with pastels, you are going to mat it. You're going to mat it with a spacer so that any loose dust can fall behind the mat, and you're going to put it behind glass, not plexiglass, because plexiglass is a static charge and will attract the dust to the to the plexiglass, but you would, um, you'd have it behind uh, glass. So you could use a UV glass if you were concerned. But I think if you're using these as like your final highlights and things like that, um, and the majority of your painting is done with a medium, a hard and a medium pastel, I don't think there would be that big of a fear of, um, of fading. I mean, white's not going to fade. White is white. Maybe some year, maybe I wouldn't use them for my darkest darks. Um, but then again, black pigment's usually pretty cheap. It's like, you know, coal, uh, not coal, um, like burnt, um, burnt matter. So generally, I would think though that's pretty cheap material. And, um, and yeah, so cons would be some of your pastels are going to be smaller than others. So you kind of wonder, are you getting what you're paying for? But the price overall is pretty cheap when you consider, like, what's a set of, like, 40 pastels by Sennelier going for a half stick. That's going to be going for quite a bit more, I would think. Um, I can look it up right now, actually. But other other than that, I mean, I think that uh, I think they're nice. I think that they're a good value. Of course, if the price jacks up to like 60 bucks, I probably would not say so. I'm going to go with Sennelier. It's not pastel. We'll see what we get. I know they, they have been running specials, so... Let's just see. Let's see. Well, the 120 set is going for 141. So, I mean, that's not... Let's see, they have a 40 set? Let's see. They have a 20 color set. Let's see. Their 20 color set is going for $31.99. So their 20 color set is about the same if you're an Amazon Prime member as you would pay for this 40 color set. Um, so that's something, that's something to think about. I think the pros are the, they're soft. I like soft pastels. Good for like really soft. They're really soft, like Sen, like Sennelier. You could layer up your final highlights with these. I'm just gonna do a quick little. I mean, yeah, that's like it doesn't feel as buttery as a Schmincke, but it definitely feels as soft as a Sennelier. If, if you've used those brands, you'll know what I mean. You know, it's kind of hard to layer it on top of uh, this previous. I mean, it sticks, but I can feel that there's definitely a lot of tooth underneath there. So, um, so they're very soft. That's a pro. Uh, they, the colors, 
lay down fine. I think it's a pretty good value for money, you know, if you're less than a dollar a stick. Um, the color selection, if you, if these are all the pastels you have, that, that would be a con. You just don't have the variety that you would want. Um, and also, if these are the only pastels you have, you're going to have issues with them being too soft, I think. So I think they're kind of more of a, a specialty type need, kind of, or they're, you know, kind of for the finishing highlights, but not a one you should start off with that's going to meet all your needs. I think you'd be better off starting with, like, the, the Mungio soft pastel set, which is like 12 bucks or something, because it's got like 48 colors or 72 colors or something. They're tiny sticks. They're like probably a quarter of that size, but you get that variety. And I think something like that for a beginner would be a better bet than this. I think this is more like you've been doing pastels for a while. You've got maybe some new pastels and you've got some, um, you know, just random open stock sticks from here and there. Like I have a bunch of Windsor Newton pastels and those are kind of a medium hardness. Um, they're called soft pastels, but they're not as like hard as a new pastel, but they're not as soft as a Sennelier or a Schmincke. And then these would be good for your final layers. So, um, you know, as long as you have all those facts, you can determine whether there's something that's going to work for you. They're very opaque. They're um, um, a little inconsistent between sticks, but I mean, they're handmade. So I think that's fairly, that's fairly, um, fairly common. I wish I could remember what the... Uh, I could hold, let's see, this is probably a Windsor & Newton. So this is one of the smaller ones next to a Windsor & Newton. Let's take one of the larger ones next to a Windsor & Newton. That larger one is much bigger than a Windsor & Newton. So, I mean, I th I'd say they're pretty well. Let's see if I can lend you. Here's a handmade Mungio one. Uh, the bigger ones are similar in diameter to the handmade Mungio ones, if you need, want that for... Cons the comparison, like some are smaller. The Mungio ones are pretty chunky. Let's check this red one out. Pretty close. I think the Mungio ones are still a little bit fatter. Lengthwise, though, I would say what you're getting in this half stick is about half of what you would get in the full stick Mungio. So, I mean, apples to apples. I think it's, uh, I, well, the Mungios are harder too. So, if you have the Mungios, these are definitely, these definitely have a harder, harder feel to them. And I'll just swatch something else about that value. Uh, this is probably the same value. Value how is how dark or light something is. Yeah, this is like this actually. I would say these are more smudgier than the Mungios. So like these actually, when I, when I put this down, it doesn't feel like it's harder. But this definitely feels smudgier. It's kind of like, it, they feel so much like a Snelli. I actually had a look to see where they were made because I was wondering if that might have been some of a kind of a white label product because I heard that Snelli uh, white label some of Jackson's products. But um, these just, they lay down more product, they're more dustier, and they're more opaque. So just kind of like a, a softer lay down. I hope that's helpful. I hope that, um, like, when you see these on Amazon, maybe they'll come out with different color families. Honestly, I would prefer more of a general assortment or maybe all pastels or all portrait or all landscape or something, but that's because I have a ton of pastels. I mean, this is my green drawer, guys. I have all these green pastels. I mean, I got a lot of pastels, so it's it would be nice to be able to like customize what you were picking out a little bit more. But as I can see it, this is it. I think they're good. I think they're a good value for your money. They're a nice soft pastel, as long as that's what you need. If you're looking for more of a, a mid soft pastel, nothing quite this soft, or you're looking for a greater assortment, then I would keep looking. But um, for what they are, I think they're pretty good. But on their own, they're not going to be that useful to me. I gotta, I gotta put them in with my other pastels to make them a little more useful. But I will use these. Um, like I use these in these four sketches just to give you an idea of kind of how they lay down and how they worked on a on a toned surface and the swatches. I'm happy with them. Um, I definitely feel like I overworked all of these because I just got so much pastel down when I was using them. But um, but that said, I like them, and I do know they have some artwork on the Paul Rubens Instagram page. I think they might have used some other color, other skin tone colors, but maybe not. Maybe um, maybe not. Uh, I really can't say. I mean, because there are a lot of neutrals here, and depending on how much you want to layer them up, you could definitely get a good variety there. So I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Look at my fingers, but it's not just Paul Rubens. My these green fingers are from Mungio. So, um, uh, so just to just to also let you know, my preference, my favorite pastels are Schmincke, and they are like butter. They're buttery soft. So I do like a softer pastel. Like I'm definitely gonna 
enjoy sketching with a soft, even though if I'm doing a like a painting I'm going to spend time with, I start with a harder pastel and work my way up to the softer brands. Um, just to put pen, pastel to paper, I, I prefer the feeling of a soft pastel, so that might color my judgment a little bit. Um, if you love Conte crayons, these are probably going to feel like, you know, you're slipping on ice all the time because they are so, um, they are so much softer. So yeah, I don't think, I don't, I, I don't think they're, they're not hard and scratchy. And that's always what I'm afraid of when I'm trying a new pastel. They are not that at all. Even with a hard pastel, you don't want it to be scratchy. You still want it to put down pigment. You just don't want the dust. You want, you know, your lines to stay where you put them. You want less smudgeability. You don't want scratchiness and dustiness. You know, you still want to see that pigment there. And uh, and I do feel like these are these are pretty charged with pigment. They do seem like a good quality product. So, um, so I like them. And uh, I think they're a good product. Whether they're for you or not, that's only something you can decide. There can be great products that just don't suit you. There can be mediocre products that you love because they suit you. So I just want to put that out there. I hope you found this helpful. I'm afraid to turn my camera off because I think I'm going to leave a big fingerprint on it. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I got a clean finger. I'm going to try to turn my camera off with that. But thank you so much for watching in any event. Until next time, happy crafting.